Combos, combos, combos! Alright everyone, welcome to the final episode of Rurouni Kenshin, Enjo Kyoto Rine! So as you've noticed, I've been gone for some time, I haven't been, or actually I haven't just done this episode in the longest time, simply because college, you know, studies are completely crazy, and uh, lots of friends wanting to, you know, get together and steam sales. There's a steam summer sale, so make sure to jump on that. Really nice prices. But that aside, as you can see, I also have a new, uh, a new, you know, a new name that I go by, Captain Sheepy. It's a lot more convenient, more memorable, and I have other reasons, but I'll touch on that later, perhaps. But right now, the main focus of this episode, being the final episode, see, we have to fight Sojiro twice and then Shishio three times. However, I didn't want to make this into two episodes because I didn't want to have another you know, moment where I'm not doing episodes or anything like that, and I didn't want to split it apart into two different episodes because this way it's less stressful on me, and you guys get straight down to the bottom of this. However, I'm abridging a lot of the scenes in the game because this is 40 minutes. Actually, not even 40 minutes since I cut out some of the scenes, but this is around an hour or more of just cutscenes and somewhat gameplay, but mostly cut cutscenes. So, as you can see, I'm fighting Sojiro. And this kid is... oh god. I had to do at least maybe five dry runs of this battle, you know, just losing over and over before I actually started recording, just so I could figure out the way to defeat him. And the easiest way for me was to literally just stay on his butt. If he dashes around, you follow him and you beat the crap out of him, just like that. So at this point, Sojiro's sandals snapped. That was a little hard to say. And now he he's also kind of uh, having conflicting ideals about Kenshin's ideals in his own that Shishio taught him. Shishio taught him that the weak live, the weak die and the strong live. Whereas Kenshin protects the weak and you know, and yet he's so strong. So he's trying to figure out, you know, he's like, he's just he's having this little psychological thing because he was nearly killed in his childhood and he had to kill uh, all the people that well, they were gonna kill him anyway, but he had to kill all the people that were technically sort of his family or whatnot in order to survive if it, you know and if he didn't he would have been in uh, deep doo-doo so now we're fighting Sojiro again and this is more of his final form so he starts using uh, 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 the uh, two steps or one step from the Shukuji in which he just literally goes all over the place his speed is beyond even like it's just beyond anything However, Kenshin also notices that he's slowing down because he's distracted. Aggressive as he is though, you cannot take this kid lightly. Do not ever stay off his butt or he will destroy you. And then once you take him down to 25% of his health, he really goes all out. He starts throwing in big combos. But for now he uses the two steps or one step from the Shukuchi. Very powerful technique. All right. So as you can see, I'm actually struggling a lot right now, and I don't think I'm gonna make it through. I'm just trying to charge up my super meter so I can kill him. So some strategies that you can use is sometimes the characters will wait around. I mean, not Sojiro specifically, but you can charge up your meter, of course, in the Bato Jutsu stance, and they could just keep spamming supers. This does take a while though, so you'll, you might lose some time on your grade unless you actually get everything to hit, unlike I did here. On the other hand, you can just keep you know attacking a lot and throwing in a lot of combos to increase the super meter. Well, I mean, the super meter is the little blue uh, rotating orb on the bottom left at the screen there. As you can see now, Sojiro has entered his third form. I mean, I, I consider this his third form when he's uh, pretty much 35-25% down on health. And he just literally one-step Shikuchi's almost everything. Like, he'll combo into it, he'll cancel out of it, he will do whatever it takes to kill you. This kid's very, very annoying to fight. Like I said, it took me five dry runs before I finally figured out how to defeat him until this point. This point, I've actually, I'm doing for the first time, so... I only have one hit till death once, uh, once you go into that little, uh, he uh, panic mode. This is really intense for me right now, since 
All I could just do is rely on dodging because defending this kid is the worst thing you could possibly do. His he breaks actually no, defending almost anyone up to this point is terrible cuz they break through your defense just like that. Luckily his super is incredibly easy to dodge because he just all the time he never spammed it close to me, so I had nothing to worry about when fighting him with that at least. I just had to worry about one step from the Shukuchi. That move. You see, because he, he just teleports right to you. And he could do he can actually teleport he can actually attack you at any time. I've had a moment where he only did that for a second and then he he was ready on me, so. I'm hoping I hit him. Okay, well I couldn't really see anyway. <laughs> oh, what was he doing? Oh shoot, okay. This that could actually hit, possibly, but luckily it's easy to see coming from afar. Whew. This is tough. I mean, I think... Oh. I was gonna say this is the most intense battle I've ever had, but he just... No, now it's not. Now I need revenge. I'm gonna kill this kid. You know what? Let me show you uh, a full death combo. 100% death combo. Um, or Okay, well, actually, it's more of a 90% death combo. Because now I just realized I damaged him. Here it is. Okay, not there. Probably it's an 80% death combo. Uh, 80 hit, you know, it takes off 80% of the character's health. You're trying to do it. There we go. If you have a lot of Tsunagi, which is what I'm doing, being able to cancel, you can stun the opponent after so much of a big combo. And then, you know, do a little combo, finish off with a super. This might as well be the biggest cancel combo I've made in the game so far. I'm quite proud of it. Because it included a stun in there. Street Fighter style, you know? And with that finished, we can go on to the next battle. Anyway, I'm not actually going to go straight to the next battle, not without, you know, showing Sojiro's resolve, but basically he realizes Kenshin was right and that Shishio uh, was wrong. You know, that's that's basically what's going on here. And uh, the reason his sword is broken is because Kenshin used the Amakakeru Ryuno Hirameki, the ultimate uh, Hiten Mitsurugi move. So, with that resolved, we'll go on to the next part. And now we're on the three-part final boss, Makoto Shishio, who uses a lot of flame attacks and he's very annoying and he's really good at comboing and he could pretty much fight almost exactly like you except he has a grab which is very cheap so I suggest here's this here's the easiest way to kill M Makoto Shishio without actually getting damaged much or even hurt at all basically just take the Batojutsu stance and just watch him walk to you let your super meter charge up. I'm, I'm just using super meter because I'm used to that from fighting games. I've been playing a lot of that recently. But keep charging up your super. And then use the Kuza Ryu Sen. I mean, you could try to... I, I'm trying to use the Amakake Ryu Ryu no Hirameki because that will do a lot of damage at point blank. But I don't think I'm able to successfully do it. Oh! Oh, wait. Okay, maybe I whiff it or maybe I actually do do it. Okay, I whiffed it, which it doesn't do as much damage, but at least it, you know, knocks off some health. I upgraded the skill up to level 3, so it could, uh, you know, even if I whiff it, at least I'm actually doing something rather than nothing. Alright, so actually, I think I do manage to land an Amakakiru on him, the point-blank version, which takes off about 45% of the health if you have it at level 3, especially on Shishio, but... It's just very stingy to pull off. Whenever I do L1 Triangle in Bato Jutsu Stance, he goes for the Soryusen technique. So, it's incredibly vital that you get the timing precise. I think you have to stand there for a few seconds, perhaps, and then press L1 in Triangle with exact timing. It can't be like L1 Triangle, or then you'll block. It can't be try one, uh, Triangle L1, or then he'll attack. And there's the ultimate technique. Pretty awesome, eh? Uh, you know, apparently the move is so strong that even if the person blocks it, they get pulled in by the vacuum of the of the attack, 
and with their guard already off from the first hit, the second hit can come out and hit the person, which was the whiff hit, basically. Uh, for, for those of you who are wondering why I say whiff, it's because of fighting games as well. Uh, basically, it's just if you miss the attack. Alright. So, if he gets even two of those flame hits on you, you're stunned and he can do whatever he wants. And the grab is possibly the worst thing that could happen to you besides his super move. His uh, grab technique takes off about 30-40% of your health. And, I mean, it is one of his signature moves, technically. So, one of the other easy ways to beat him is to use the Shoryu Sen into the... Oh, crap. Well, first, uh, let me concentrate here. <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> concentrate. I, I actually, uh, I'm actually dubbing over the recording. I'm not actually doing this at the same time, but I, I still remember how I was freaking out at this moment. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. But I really... Oh, okay, okay. So... What, one of the other ways to, to beat him is to do the little combo loop I did with Sojiro, but instead you run up to him, do the Shoryusen, and then come down with the... What's it? I forgot what the other move is called already. But, the, the you know, one of the easiest, most safest ways to beat this guy is to just use Kuzuryusen over and over. And he's dead! Hooray! So... Naturally, uh, I think in the anime, I remember uh, Kenshin, you know, got a lot of blows to him, and he also got his neck bit in. He's very weak at this point, so he decides to use the Gurenkaina right there when Kenshin's weak. And for a moment, we actually think Kenshin is dead. So, basically, in short, Kenshin gets knocked out, and Saito gets in there. And then, you know, Asano and uh, Aoshi also get in there, but they all get their asses beat so badly. Okay, well, actually, no, he's not really winning here because Shishio's wearing a metal headband, but he does get his ass beat pretty badly. I mean, I, like, he actually gets Gurren Kainad as well. Yeah, things don't go out well. But then, of course, Kenshin gets back up because he's had enough time to rest, and, uh... Well, this is going to be rinse and repeat here, so I'm just going to fast forward this if you don't mind. He's crumping! Oh! Hello there! How are you? Ow! That hurt. Alright, third and final anticlimactic battle because nothing's changed much except he has bigger combos, more cancels, more health, and he chases you a little more, but no, nah, nothing's really changed. So once again, I'm afraid to say it, but I'd rather get through this a little quickly and save time for the ending rather than having you guys just watch me sit around like a duck until I can go crazy.
All right. We beat the game. We can move on to a new series. I can't believe that battle was anticlimactic, but it had to be. Because he was hard to beat. But I cannot show you the whole entire ending because it is pretty long. Let's see, about another 10 or 11 minutes of your time, I think. Yeah, 11 or 13, no, 12 minutes of your time. So I'm just going to get the more important parts in there. Because, uh, you know, it'd be more straight to the point that way without all the loading and this and that, etc. However, if you've seen the anime, then you are not seeing anything new. You can trust me on that. Alright, so before I actually abridge though, uh, there are a few Let's Plays I have in mind and you know, videos and whatnot. And I still need to work on uh, more Top 10s and the Tetsu Zanko video. The invincibility video is pretty tough because I just keep coming across more things, so I think I'll put a date on where things end with what I'm finding. So anyway, regardless, Let's Play wise, I was thinking Mischief Makers, I kind of went against uh, Mystical Ninja starring, Go starring Goemon, uh, I considered Fairy Bloom Freesha, and sort of considered God Hand, but that's an incredibly difficult game. But really funny and awesome. But on the other hand, it's like, eh, maybe not. So, oh, and then it's also pretty glitchy when I play it through PSSets. So, I'm definitely considering between Mischief Makers and Fairy Bloom Freesha. Fairy Bloom Freesha, keep in mind, I just started, though. And it's more of a brawling game, so, you know, with the less concentration on the story, more on the action. But it's pretty cool. Because, I mean, if you love combos and fighting games or just plain badassery, Fairy Bloom Freesha is a very awesome game. Like, it's a combo haven. If you love to make combos in games, we're talking, you know, a lot of freedom, like God Hand, Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, and have, you know, also other fighting game aspects. Uh, Tetsu Zanko. Yes, they have a Tetsu Zanko in there. I, I fangasmed over that like crazy, okay? But that aside... You know, like, lots of fighting game stuff. Um, you know, and just... You can cancel so... M you can cancel so much in that game. I, I fell in love with it the instant I started playing it. So, you know, there's that. And then Mischief Makers, on the other hand, is an incredible platformer with, you know, some... Oh, not puzzle element. I mean, in a way, puzzle elements, but not really. It's it's just... It's a very awesome game that uses a lot of awesome uh, speed running and flight controls and whatnot. So I've been considering the two. The other, the only problem is with Mischief Makers. I'd need to use the emulator because the capture thing I have for the N64 does not work well. If you saw my first Parasite Eve Let's Plays, those look terrible compared to what I did more recent. But that aside, um, and then there also, you know, there's also a little lag on maybe one or two stages, maybe three. I'm not sure yet. I haven't tested them all out. But for the most part. I could kind of speed run that game, really easy, short stages, well okay not really easy but um, for me it's somewhat easy because I've done it so much but that's what I'm considering also. Short game too, really short game, so at least I could co cover a lot of stages in one go perhaps. But yeah those are the two I'm considering, Fairy Bloom Freesha and Mischief Makers for now. So uh, stay up to date. And it's time to start a bridging! Yes, Saito is reinforcing that he is the most badass character in the series. So pretty much everyone's back together again. And, you know, they're kind of reminiscing on what happened. Misao no longer needs to search for Aoshi, as he has decided to stay back with Obi-Waban again. And Misao says her goodbyes and thank yous, as does everyone else. Everyone arrives back home safely. They haven't been back in a while, but they're all happy to be back. Kaoru welcomes Kenshin home, and his answer to that is... He's home. Alright, that's the end of this episode. Whew! 
it's been a while since I've uh, do, you know done this, so I'm trying to get back into the hang of things. You probably noticed I was, you know, I just I feel this episode wasn't so good, so I was just trying to get back into my wild self because I, I've been away from doing this for so long. So I, I hope I could get back into the hang of things again and hopefully bring out more videos again. But with college in the way, mm, it's gonna be tough. But I'll try to I'll try I'll try to put my resources to more smaller things. Maybe I just might not do let's plays. Maybe I'll just do more shorter plays or just kind of little random things. Because I'm not joking, it's it's uh, you know to do a let's play you know, it requires a lot of dedication and yet you know it feels good when you finish the series which now I have oh my god Saito you look freaking scary but yep finally did it and uh, I hope you enjoy whatever I come up with and uh, maybe I just might not do let's plays anymore for now for now you know who knows though. I'm in my indecisive mode, but trust me, that's when I decide something pretty awesome, I think. Oh, shoot. Did I say I think?